Photography friends, my name is Henry and on this YouTube channel I share the behind the scenes of my photography adventures. Look what landscape photography does to us. Some tips and tricks. Then we've got the line coming in. And of course, a little bit of banter. Get a look at that. Currently releasing one video per day over the advent period. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell so that you don't miss any of these uploads. Now let's get into today's video. Oh, it feels like it feels like one of those locations that might be quite busy. So welcome to South Wales, ladies and gents. I have not explored this area very much at all. More specifically, welcome to Banai Brochinyog, also known as the Brecon Beacons. So this small little area in the southern end of the National Park is known as Waterfall Country. It's an area of Britain really that I've wanted to come to for many, many years. And I'm delighted to have finally made it down here. Now, in today's video, I'm hoping to photograph some waterfalls, believe it or not. And I want to talk a little bit about the rule of thirds in landscape photography. Now, really, really important that I say this right off the bat. This is very significant. I think the rule of thirds is a little bit of a misnomer. I think it's a bit misleading in the fact that it's got the word rule in it. If you are just getting into landscape photography or any type of photography for that matter, remember this, it is not a hard and fast rule, despite being called the rule of thirds. Probably should be called the, the guideline of thirds, but it's not really got the same ring to it, has it? But Remember that, you don't have to use the rule of thirds. You're not gonna have a rubbish photograph if you haven't used the rule of thirds. But even though it's quite a basic approach to composition, it's something that I myself use probably the vast majority of the time. And I love the rule of thirds, to be honest. And yeah, just wanted to chat about it in today's video. Hopefully take some photographs where we could use the rule of thirds and I can talk you through how I approach it and things like that. And yeah, how I use it in my composition. I am really looking forward to this location, man. And it's a perfect sort of day for it as well. It's another sort of gray, drizzly day, um, ideal for photographing these waterfalls. Wow, I think it is more than safe to say that this would be some spot in the middle of autumn. Look at all these beautiful deciduous trees and everything. I tell you what, we're not even at the waterfalls just yet. But yeah, what an autumnal location this must be. Wow, so, so cool. So this is the first waterfall here. Absolutely beautiful. And I've got a couple of ideas for maybe two or three different compositions from this particular location. But the first one here you can see, I've just tried my best to get the tripod as close to this beautiful wall here on the right hand side. Look at all of these mosses and ferns. Just absolutely ideal. And of course it just arches round and leads us straight into that waterfall. And this is a really good use of the rule of thirds here as well. A really simple use of the rule of thirds. So you can see here for this shot, I'm using the ruler's thirds in a really, really simple way. Like I said, I'm placing the waterfall up here on the top left-hand third of the frame of the composition. And this is something that I love to do, using the cross sections of the rule of thirds to place my subjects, to place my focal point. So obviously the main focal point in this image, in this composition is the waterfall, of course. But then to balance that out, I've gone diagonally across to the bottom right-hand third here where we've got all of these grasses, these ferns, these mosses and everything here. So it feels like a real nice diagonal balance from the bottom right hand third to the top left hand third. And this is something that I do do a lot of the time is when I get to a location in real time before I've got my camera out, I'm already thinking in a real basic way about that rule, the rule of thirds, where am I going to place my subjects? Where am I going to place my focal points? What are my focal points? So in this instance here I already knew from this perspective at least that the waterfall was going to be up in the top left hand third somewhere 
and then it was just a case of trying to find something to balance that on the bottom right hand side so you see how it's like a bit of a diagonal a bit of a crisscross across the composition across the frame so i'm shooting this at one half of a second to get some lovely movement in that water and i'm actually focus stacking it as well because i'll show you 14 millimeters wide angle lens from where this lens is that is so close i've got some of these ferns and rocks and um, grasses or whatever they are down here and then as it moves around focus there focus there focus there and then get one focused right on the waterfall you know really important so hopefully this should be pin sharp and a good use of the rule of thirds <laughs> Ah, so as beautiful as that falls was, it was very busy and uh, yeah, there was a bit of a crowd of people there at one stage, which if you know me, just isn't really my thing. So I'm moving on now to hopefully a waterfall that's, well, going to be a little bit more secluded. I've just got to follow this river upstream and I just read online that there's a falls that you get to eventually that's a bit more secluded and that is very, very beautiful, but it's not part of the sort of official route, if you will. So going back to the rule of thirds, a really good way of looking at it, I think, is to think of using the rule of thirds as opposed to just sticking your main subject in the center. So I'll pop that image back up on the screen to use as an example. And for me, it's all about two things, balance and flow. So firstly, like I was mentioning, when I was taking that photograph, it feels like there's a nice balance diagonally. The waterfall is up in the top left and the reeds and the grasses, the mosses, the ferns are down in the bottom right. It feels nice. But then the flow, this is where I think it gets interesting. This is why I love the rule of thirds because it's brilliant to tell a story. Now you remember I said that from the reeds and the ferns, there was a nice arch as the sort of wall led us round really straight in to the other focal point, of course, the waterfall. Now imagine if I just stuck that waterfall dead in the center of the frame. Firstly, that would be absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In many ways, that'd be brilliant. It'd take your attention straight to the waterfall. But as a landscape photographer, what I wanted to do there and what I like to do a lot of the time is, like I just said, tell a story. And that story for me was the flow, the movement of the audience's eye from the reeds right round the wall up to the waterfall. So it's a little bit more of a flow, makes the image feel a little bit more three dimensional, I suppose. And I'll say it again, it tells a bit more of a story of the area using the wide angle lens. And I really like that. No, it was no good. The route to the secret waterfall was a little bit treacherous in the end. It came to a bit of a dead end. And I think I just took the wrong path. It got to a point where I would have had to have done a bit of a river crossing to have continued. So I said, stuff that and you're finding me now back on the official safe route. But the waterfalls that we should be getting to very soon should still be absolutely fantastic. Wow, so look at this, so powerful. And I'm just tentatively making my way around because, oh man, this is just so slippy, all of these rocks. I'm trying to be as careful as I can and as slow as I can really. But what I'm trying to do is actually get to this little fall here to see if I can actually use them as a bit of foreground interest. Whoa, in the, in the photograph, but yeah. It is slippy as anything. Wow, this is absolutely incredible. Wow, this has been so, so tricky. A, because the ground beneath us is like ice. I've been sliding around the place, but B, compositionally, I'm really not sold on this photograph that I'm taking here, but I want to show it to you anyway, because I do feel it's a pretty good example of the second thought process, process that I have around the rule of thirds, really. So I'll pop this up on the screen for you to see now. And there or thereabouts, this is my composition. The aspect ratio will be a little bit different, firstly look how much of a difference the polarizer is making 
getting rid of most of that glare, which is brilliant. So you can see firstly, from the foreground, we've got this big sort of rock pool down here. And I'm using the wide angle lens to get in close to him. Now you can see that I've centered him, but we'll get onto the rule of thirds in a second. But you can see I've got this crack down here leading us up into the pool from the bottom right. But what's interesting here is, I'm using the rule of thirds horizontally for the most part. So you can see the bottom two thirds of the image are taken up by all of these, well, rock pools and this section of slippy floor. And then the top third up there is just the waterfall, a little bit of the sky, which I may or may not crop out, I'm not sure yet. But you can see this is another simple example of the rule of thirds. And this horizontal approach of the rule of thirds is something that I would generally use when I'm out in the open out on the sides of mountains where we've got a lot of the sky in the frame and generally I'd have two thirds, the bottom two thirds would be land, mountains, rivers, whatever it is that I'm photographing and then the top third would be the sky but if the sky and the clouds are really interesting I'd flip it, I'd have the top two thirds as the sky and just the bottom third as the land but that one's quite rare but again I feel like it can give your image a good flow and a good feeling of balance as well. Ah, a little bit frustrating that was. It, it's really annoying, isn't it, when you, when you get to a subject so beautiful, just like those falls, and you almost feel sold on it. You're thinking, oh, I'll definitely be able to get a nice photograph from here, brilliant. And then 10 minutes later, you're struggling with composition, and ah, yeah, that was a little bit of a frustrating one. That small falls, by the way, that I was trying to incorporate into the composition somehow, just wasn't quite right. The big falls off in the background was kind of getting cut off down at the bottom, and yeah, it just, it wasn't quite working, so I'm feeling a little bit unsatisfied. So what I'm gonna do is head up back to the path, which is up this big steep hill here, and just keep walking. I think there's maybe another couple of waterfalls. Might even get a different perspective on this one. I don't know yet, because I've never been here before. And yeah, hopefully try and find something that is, yeah, a little bit more satisfying. <laughs> So as we move on here, I wanted to share a bit of a quick tip. This is something that I think is really important and it's something that I am absolutely not applying this afternoon. And that's the reason it's just came to my mind. I've become aware of it. And that is when you come to these sorts of locations, by that I mean locations where your subjects are essentially predetermined. I'm in waterfall country here. I'm here to photograph waterfalls. I think it's really important to try and not get too fixated, too tunnel vision on those subjects that you have come to photograph. And that is exactly what I am doing this afternoon. I am walking kilometer after kilometer, ignoring all of this beautiful wider landscape, all these woodlands, all of this potential for some nice intimate photographs. And I am just going from waterfall to waterfall. I think that's a little bit of a shame. And with all of that being said, I'm going against all of that advice because we're at the next waterfall here and it's looking stunning. Don't be like me. <laughs> ah, you know what, I am struggling a little bit here, ladies and gents. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what it is as well. I think what's happened here is I've come into this photo shoot this afternoon with too much desire to want to get a good photograph. Now, obviously, I'm a landscape photographer. I do it for a living. Of course, I always want to get good photographs, but it's not often, it's very rare that I allow that desire to overtake the enjoyment of a photo shoot. You know, usually if I don't get a good photograph, I leave feeling unsatisfied. I'm not bothered because I could tell myself I enjoyed being out. But man, this is one of those rare instances where I've let what I feel, the lack of a good photograph, get the better of me you know and it it really affects me because I work very much on mindset when I'm out as a photographer I have to be in the right frame of mind and I usually am and I'm in a good flow once that mindset's ruined 
I just can't find photographs, man, so I've left that waterfall behind. See you later. You were beautiful, but yeah, I had no oil in the cogs, so to speak, so. A ah, little bit of a shame. Apologies to end on a bit of a bad note, but it's just the reality, and I'm sure you have been there as well. And I hope, I hope you at the very least got one or two tips on the rule of thirds. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you very much. Please do hit the subscribe button to follow me along on the rest of this Advent series. Hit the little notification bell and you'll be notified as these videos come out right up until Christmas Eve. But yeah, thank you all so very much. And I shall see you on the next adventure, wherever that may be. Out. Mm -hmm.